Then thou speakest in vision to thy holy one and says, I have laid help upon one that is, is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. Anointed with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. The man, Christ Jesus, we're talking though, the outward man perish, the inward man's renewed day by day. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arms shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. What's the horn? I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. What's the hand? He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forever. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also, there we are, will I make to endure forever in his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, and if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with stripes. There's a rod and a staff. So the wicked that are headed for here, the wicked know not anything. They don't have, the rod of God is not upon the head of the wicked. There's no correction for them. But for the righteous that are, have a, in their heart and their soul, have a heart for God, he corrects them with his rod and his staff. They consider the things. The Lord corrects them that they will not be destroyed with the world. The days of his youth, look at verse 45. Hath thou shortened and thou covered him with shame? How long, O Lord, will thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is, wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What is, now listen to verse 48. All this he's talking about the Lord, the natural flesh, the man, God becoming a man, made himself of no reputation. He's a man. Just like you, for as much as the children protected the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. And in all things, he was made like his brethren. Take a look at verse 48. Lord, what man is he that liveth? And shall not see death. Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Now that's a powerful verse. What's he talking about? What man? I'll tell you what man it is. The man Christ Jesus. That's who it is. Amen. Bless God. That's who he is. Amen. He's a man all right. But he is God Almighty. He is the Lord Jehovah, God Almighty. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Yeah, he'll raise up his own body of flesh and blood. Bless God, he will. Destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. He's prophesying of that man right there. What man is that? That shall not see death. That will literally deliver his soul from the grave. That from the lower parts, from the nether parts of the earth, Selah. That grave there is not Kubar. That grave is not Kubar. It's not, if you look the grave up there, it is Hades. It is hell, Sheol. What does that mean? Take a look at it. Look at it again. Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the departed spirits? <laughs> yeah, he will. He will descend into the heart of the earth, and he will raise his own body up in the resurrection. That is a death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The death and the resurrection right there in one verse. Pretty good, ain't it? What man? Shall not see that. What man? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the departed spirits? Shoal, Hades, or the world of the dead? 
Did you get it? You're talking about both of them there. Take a look at, uh, I want you to give you these, these uh, I want you to see here. Take a look at, at uh, this is about Jonah. I want you to have the scripture. Go to Matthew 12, verse 40. This is a Bible study that you're listening to here at the Jesus Christ International Church. Held by yours truly and all the elders and et cetera that we do here at the church. Matthew 12, verse 40. We're teaching on hell. Matthew 12 and verse 40. And you know, you've heard it a thousand times. Here we go again. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. It, where? In the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea? In the grave or the tomb? In a cubar? Cuber? No. Right here. In the heart of the earth. Where's the heart of the earth? That is a shoal. That is the, that is the world of the dead. That's in the heart of the earth. That is in Hades, hell, shoal. Will God leave his soul in hell? No. Neither will he left his holy one. See, corruption, neither will he leave his soul in hell. Do you see? Jesus went to that state of departed spirits. Do you see that? Amen. Hallelujah. He prophesied it right there. Yeah, the, the soul is the offering for sin. That's in Hades or Sheol, the soul. He does not, in his de dying, it's not just a burial. He went on into Sheol, the place of departed spirits and preached to those spirits shut up in prison. So he could leave captivity captive. Take him with him. Well, take a look over here. Take a look at Isaiah 53.10. When you take a look at that in Isaiah, which is a mini Bible in itself, 66 chapters of, uh, synonymous with the 66 books of the Word of God. And uh, we see here in Isaiah 53, which uh, wonderful uh, about the Messiah, the, the man, who is working our salvation. In verse 10, you'll see it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. We're talking about death, burial, and resurrection here. He hath put him to grief. Watch this. Now that is suffering and his soul being in an agony. Now watch it. He goes on and says, When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. The offering for sin there is literally where he's going into the heart of the earth. He's going to shed his blood on Calvary. What is it that he first ascended? That he first descended into the heart of the earth and went and preached to the spirits shut up in prison. Not here. This ain't second chance doctrine. Here are the ones that died in the Lord. He goes to those spirits shut up in prison that died in the Lord. That's where he's made his soul an offering for sin. He goes there. Watch what it says here. He shall see. He shall see what? Did he see seed there? Did he see his seed there? Did he see you? Yes. Did he see, let me ask you this. Did he see past, present, and future? Yes, he did. When did he see those, that seed? When he makes his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. Abraham, rejoice to see my day. He saw it. Somebody said, well, that was way back in. Yes, he called Angel Lord. Yep, there it is again too, bud. He saw him there. Abraham saw the Lord right there. 
Abraham saw the Lord right there. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all of them saw, David saw the Lord right there. Amen. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, all the way to Malachi, saw the Lord right there. And he saw his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Not all. If you're dead and die unsaved, you're unsaved. For he shall bear their iniquities. Did he pay for the sins of all of those back there and all the fathers of, of the natural Israel? Yes, he did. He paid for the sins, past, present, and future. Huh. Wow. His soul an offering. His soul an offering? No, his body's an offering, Brother Beard. His body's an offering. Yeah, his body was killed and was buried. But his soul was made an offering right here. His body was beaten. Not 40 stripes save one. Pilate tried to kill him by scourging. His body bled and died on that cross. He died. But his soul was made an offering for sin. Why, he, was it necessary for him to go down here? He shall be pleased when he sees his soul an offering for sin. Was it necessary? For it behooved Christ to suffer and to die and to be raised again. And the remission of sins shall be preached in his name. It was necessary for him to go here to lead captivity captive, honey. This is where he, where, where did he lead captivity captive? When he went into the State of departed spirits, captivity, those that were held captive, death all their lifetime. And he led captivity captive, taking the keys of death, hell, and the grave with him. So don't tell me there's soul sleep down there. He wasn't preaching to a bunch of laid out saints down there, didn't know what was going on, hadn't set their alarm clock waiting for the resurrection. I don't think so. He's going to wait. Those spirits there know exactly where they are. Those spirits over in heaven, whenever he goes there, they're under, uh, under the fifth seal. I saw the souls of them were slain for the word of God, the testimony which they held. White robes, and they said, O oh Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before thou avenge our blood upon them that dwell on the earth? White robes of righteousness were given to each one of them. The first soul sleeping right there, why are they talking to Jesus? And it said, Until your fellow servants and your brother that should be killed as you were should be fulfilled. Amen. Buddy, they know where they are. There ain't no soul sleep there. And it's definitely not annihilation, because I guarantee you in a minute, we're going to see where the beast and false prophet are, and those souls of them, they're going to be slain and go with them where the, fire, where the worm dieth not. I mean, that worm, that flesh will not die. Worm dieth not, and the, and, the, and the fire is never quenched. That's an everlasting burning flame, fire of hell. Someone said, I don't believe it. Go ahead. You will in that day. It'll be too late. Laugh at the Christians all you want to. You'll be praying in hell. Soon as you hit hell, one minute later, you'll lift your eyes up in hell and pray. Lord Jesus, have mercy on my wretched soul. It's too late. Well, Matthew 12, 40. Where's he going? We just said it a while ago. He's going into the heart of the earth. Well, where is that? Go to Ephesians 4, 9. Where is that? Where is this heart of the earth? Where is this Jesus leading captivity captive? What's all this stuff? Is this some kind of fairy tale? You Christians are always walking around hollering, you got the blessing, you got the, you got the victory. Son, you don't even know what you're talking about. Ephesians 4, 9. You got these rooty tooty fresh and fruity, and they so ever on television, they saw every Christian to be some kind of idiot that ain't got enough sense coming out of the rain. 
when the world's the idiots. You don't believe in God, you ain't no man. Somebody said, I'm a man. Yeah, you're a man to be destroyed. It takes a man to live for God. Take a look at Ephesians 4, 9. He says right here, now, take a look at verse 8. Wherefore, when he saith, when he ascended up on high, first he ascended, he descended into the heart of the earth. Then he ascended on high. It says right here in Ephesians 4, verse 8, Wherefore, when he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. When he led all these captivity and took it to heaven captive, he gave gifts unto man. For out of your belly shall, shall flow rivers of living waters. This he spake of the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. He's got to be raised from the dead. He's got to take those spirits of just men held captive with him up there. And then he's going to give gifts unto men. Watch it in verse 9. This is what tells you what he did. Now that he ascended. Yeah, he resurrected and went to heaven, Brother Beard. Yep. Well, paradise wasn't there yet. Until he, paradise was there in that Garden of Eden. Garden of Paradise. It fell. Boom. Paradise lost. State of departed spirits. Nobody had access to God. Separated from God. Excommunicated from the fellow citizens of the commonwealth of Israel. Now, now we're bought now by the blood. But that captivity, this paradise over here, Abraham's bosom, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, gather to your fathers, David, and all them that died in the faith, having never received the promise. All of that paradise right here is paradise lost, honey. Death still, death still had dominion over them. They were held captive by death. Sin reigned by death. Sin reigned by death. Now grace reigns by, through righteousness. Why? Because he went back to the Father. When he went back, what he took with him? Take captivity. But he said, what did he first ascend? Did he first ascend? No, he did not first ascend. He first descended. Where did he go? Did he go to Gehenna and burn there? He will not leave his soul in hell. That's not Gehenna. That's Hades, the Greek word Hades. A state of departed spirits where Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, paradise was. Paradise lost. Not Gehenna. He didn't burn. Amen. Nobody's burned in Gehenna yet. That's the last tale that doesn't happen until after the white throne judgment after the millennial. Then, bless God, we'll know what Gehenna is. Ain't nobody burned in Gehenna yet. What is it that he first ascended? That he, but that he also descended first. Amen. Descended first. Where did he go? into the lower parts of the earth. Where are the lower parts of the earth, the nether world, the state of departed spirits? It's got a great gulf fix. Some are in torment. They're over here, died without God. And these are the unsaved dead. These over here believe God, but they're still subject unto death. Paradise, and there's a great gulf fix between them. Lazarus is over here. In Abraham's bosom. The rich man's over here. He's wanting Abraham to dip your finger in some of this water and just touch my tongue. I'm in great torment here. This ain't going to move until the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Until he ascends. Amen. Until that three days and three nights he's in. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly well so with the son of man. Be three days and three nights where? In the heart of the earth. What does it say here? In the lower parts of the earth. Amen. The lower parts is the nether parts, the nether, netherlands, the most furthest part from the surface of creation. And outer darkness is not going to be there. It's going to be Gehenna. 
That's the utmost destruction. Somebody said, well, out of darkness means that you don't have any light. Honey, out of darkness, you're going to find it as Gehenna. The children of the, children of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. Jesus preached more on it, on hell and Gehenna, than anybody else. Because that's the final destination of the unsaved, son. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, nor in the terror of the Lord, we pray everywhere, Paul said everywhere, to repent. Man, if you only could see what this is, you'd cry out, you'd be running an altar, you'd be getting down on your knees. Did you see it? He didn't first ascend, that he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens, uh, that he might fill all things. And then he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the Lord, commissioned, perfection, and the saints, because bless God, nothing happened until he got through with this right here. He took care of them first. Why? The gospel is preached to what? To the Jews first. When? When he went down there and preached to those spirits shut up in prison. It was bless God to the Jews first until Acts the 10th chapter, and he opened it up to the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Well, I believe in soul sleep. Believe on. Ain't going to help you none. I can tell you that. You can sit there and try to sleep all day long. You're going to find out you're going to be wide awake. Knowing exactly what's going on. One second after you die, you ain't sleeping. You're going. You're moving one place. Well, he then, he, 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 uh, first ascended, he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Where? Right here. Did he go over here and preach to them? Nope. He preached right here. Somebody said, preach, preach. Where are you getting that? We'll get to that in a minute. Lower parts of the earth. Hallelujah. Uh, take a look at Psalm 30. This is a good one. David, as he uh, uh, is, is making a reference in Psalms 30, verse 1 through 3, a psalm, of, psalm and song of the dedication of the house of David. Take a look. 1 through 3. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, that thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. What he's talking about there. The Kibar, he's talking about the Lord has lifted him up to keep him a lie that he has not gone here yet to the pit. Pit there will be to the Kibar to the grave and kept him alive. He's making a reference to the living and the dead, the state of the dead. The state of the dead is in the lower part of the earth back then in the Old Testament. Do you see hell literally divided between a tormenting place and a place of blessing? Amen. A great gulf fixed. All the Old Testament, this is all. All the way to the cross, this is the way it was. Until the resurrection, Passover and the bread and first fruits. And then Passover and the bread, he dies and he's buried. While he's buried, he doesn't stay. And by the Spirit, he goes and speaks, preaches and those spirits shut up in prison. Paradise is not moved yet until he is resurrected. And he's declared to be the Son of God, Romans 1, 3, through the Spirit, by the resurrection from the dead. Because he first, not he first ascended, he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. You're going to see Ezekiel 31 and 32. I'll let you do that on our own. That's a long time reading. You'll spend about an hour there. You'll see what happened to all the kings. Let, go to there right quick. I'll just hit it in the high spots. Go to Ezekiel 32. And all of these kings are dying. And guess where they're going? They're not dying in God. They're going over here in torment. And there's a lot of conversation going on in hell. Ezekiel records it more than anybody. 
Ezekiel 32. Am I boring you? Ezekiel 32. Uh, you, get, you need to read the whole thing there, 1 to 16, 17, up that. But read verse 21. You, you, need to, it, it, you need to read the whole thing. Obviously, you're going to see the, the, these are different kings and dying and the terrible in the nations. Uh, so are the king of Babylon and, and all of these. And, and uh, uh, Egypt, Babylon, Egypt, all of these are dying. And verse 21, the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell. Honey, that ain't the grave. Show sure. Out of the midst of hell, with them that help him, thou art gone down, they lie uncircumcised, uh, slain by the sword. Circumcised are over here. Uncircumcised are over here. Circumcision, uncircumcision. The sign given to the Israel of, under the Abrahamic covenant, circumcised. You better be circumcised the spiritual circumcision now made without hence the circumcision of Christ by baptism in the name of Jesus. You're not. You're going to wind up over here. And that's exactly what it's talking about. Lay him with the uncircumcised. Asher, which is the father of Assyria. He's there. Where is he? Asher's over here. Tormented. Asher, the father of Assyria, he's there. Asher was a great man. Asher is there in all her company. His graves are about him. All of them slain, fallen by the sword. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit. And her company's round about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. Well, is that the only ones there? No, there's Elam. All the multitude round about a grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. What sword? The word of God. Amen. Sword sharpened, sword for the slaughter. Christ sat upon thy thigh, O Ezekiel. The rod shall contemn, the sword shall contemn me, the rod of my son. Elam's there. All that to cause terror in the land of the living. Yet they've borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. We're talking here the state of departed spirits, not to, not to a grave. There's not soul sleep here. They're down here. And they're not, the uncircumcised are here tormented. The circumcised are here. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? I know I'm boring you here. Now, they have, a, they have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all of them up to their graves around about and all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Though their terror was caused in the land of the living, Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that are slain. All of them right here, right in the middle of them. Not in a grave. Here. Honey, they know what's going on. They're talking down there. They shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which gone down to hell with their weapons of war. They have laid their swords under their their heads. You want the biggest lies it was. Whatever you say, you know, in Babylonia. Remember that in battle that you will go to the land of whatever, Elim, whatever it is. Yeah. You want to believe that? You go ahead. Remember whatever you slaying in battle, that's where you go into eternity. I'll tell you where you go. You don't go with the Lord. It's where you go right here. I don't care what you saw at the movies. <laughs> I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Amen. God don't care what Hollywood says. Hollywood doesn't govern nothing. That's what he said. Yeah. The terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised and shalt lie with them that are slain with a sword. Are you going to bury them in the same grave? No, you're here. You're tormented with them. There's Edom to the pit. There's the princes of the north. Zidonians, he's gone one after another. Pharaoh, the multitude, going under 33. Watchman, set the trumpet to your mouth. Watchman, watch the watchman. What for the night? All of that. Go. Uh, God, does he have pleasure in this? Look at verse 11. Saying to them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from his way and live. 
Then God said, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Well, why will you die, O house of Israel? He ain't talking about here. This is a death down here. 